How you guys doing? You should be, it's a wedding. I'd like to now announce with great pleasure the moment we all been waiting for. Mr. and Mrs. Jim and our family. Just real quick, I just want to say on behalf of Jim, Ashley, uh, McAndrews, the Booths, all their friends and family, uh, thank you for coming to the wedding and to the reception. And uh, we're going to go and sit down now and uh, have salad served here in the next couple minutes. So thank you again, guys. Second, quiet down, quiet down. Perfect. All right, guys. We're now going to have the actual cake cutting. Ashley, Jim, all eyes. Go ahead and cut. Okay, go ahead and cut it. And the cake is cut!
Save some room for uh, dinner, guys. just a few toasts. The very first one we're going to have is Dr. Booth. He's going to come up and say just a few words. Dr. Booth. For those of you that uh, know me, coming from West Texas, I just I feel so out of place up here. Uh, and when I walked in, I, I thought, you know, I don't think I've ever been to a place that had this many people in it that somebody wouldn't hang around outside scalping tickets. <laughs> but we're here today to honor these two young people, and uh, I had a little speech prepared, and it went completely out of my mind. Uh, but it, for those of you that were at the uh, dinner last night, you kind of know the history, but those that uh, uh, were not there, we're kind of celebrating two things. Uh, Jim and Ashley just graduated last weekend. Uh, Jim got his master's degree in computer science. Ashley got her bachelor's degree in uh, political science. Both of them graduated with honor. And you know, several of you have, have just met Jim tonight. What a remarkable young guy this is. You know, he, he, he got out of high school early because he knuckled down and took the courses he needed to get out of school early. And he, and he went to college. Uh, and he got out of college early. And, and so here, here's Jim and Ashley now. It started the same time uh, in school. And he's got his master's now. And Ashley's got his, her bachelor's. Now. That's amazing to me. Because I remember what it's like to be an undergrad. <clears throat> but... That was last weekend, this is this weekend, we have something totally different to celebrate. And uh, as the father of the bride, I'm, I'm almost speechless. What makes it so wonderful for me is to see the esteem that my daughter is held in by you. And that's very gratifying. Uh, Tree and I learned long ago uh, that we didn't have the, uh, the skill or the uh, experience to build great bridges or great buildings. To, to erect something that, that society was going to remember us from. We just don't have that. We put all our effort into raising our daughter so that she is our legacy. And we're very proud of her. 
Uh, but just as proud as the fact that Jim McAndrew is coming to our life and our family. We welcome him with open arms. And we know that you share with us uh, the, the belief that they're going to go very far in life ahead. I'm, I'm sorry I'm kind of stumbling here, but I really don't know what to say. So many things have been said, and I just want them to know how proud we are of them. So I guess my little toast to Jim and Ashley McAndrew, that's very hard for me to say. Ashley, I still expect you to be in by midnight tonight. <laughs> You still own my heart, but your heart is shared by somebody else, and you have a great life together. Uh, we're behind you all the way. To Ashley and Jim. Frank, who's next? All right, Paul, you want to say just a few words? Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Paul Kaysen, and I've known Jim and Ashley since freshman year of college for me and Jim. Um, we lived together for two years. Um, I've got to know them real well, and they've touched my life. And I just wanted to start out by saying that, you know, my parents told me when I was a little kid, they said, you are your friends to some degree. And I'm lucky to have them as friends. Ashley, you're beautiful, you're talented, you're smart, and you have such a good heart. And I just cherish, you know, the opportunity to become your friend. And I just want to thank you. And I just want to say to Jim, you know, you're lucky to have her and to have found her. And Jim, you've been my best friend for, you know, all these years. You know, we've had so much, you know, time together to talk. And I just want to thank you for not only getting me through college, because God knows I wasn't motivated enough to do it. Jim is the most motivated and dedicated person I know. Um, he's just always the guy who studied and, and you know went to class and you know seeing him and watching him do those things was just a role model to me and it really helped me get through it. Um, Jim also taught me a lot about life. Um, he's a risk taker. He knows that to win in life, got to take some risks and Jim really taught me that to you know sometimes you just got to go all in and I just want to say that's right and I just want to say you won big with Ashley all right now if you sister Jennifer would please come up sister group oh both okay <laughs> Uh, well, I'm Jennifer, sister of the groom. This is Joanna, also sister of the groom. And I'm here to say, well, first, before I start, Ashley, you look absolutely stunning. And Jim, you just look a little stunned. <laughs> but um, uh, what can I tell you about Ashley? We met uh, probably about six years ago, and since then there's been a lot of family vacations. And those family vacations have involved a lot of injuries, and I actually have a list here. <laughs> uh, sunburns, blisters, sprained knee, bruised tailbone, cold cough, migraines. Anyways, many trials and tribulations. <laughs> Unfortunately, I, I promised I would not tell any embarrassing stories, but for anyone who wants to talk later, I'll leave by the bar. On my dad's tab. No, really. <laughs> Ashley has been a great sport through what we like to call the McAndrew family initiation process. Um, I know both Joanna and I already think of her as a sister, and now we finally made it official, and we're so happy to have you as our new sister. Um, so before I finish, a few uh, pieces of marriage advice. And just because neither of us are married doesn't mean we're not experts on this. <laughs> Jim, first of all, for you, uh, there's a couple of phrases that us girls like to hear. Number one is, you're right. And number two is, okay, buy it. So just it buy it. And Ashley, I totally agree that every outfit deserves a different pair of shoes. I understand that. But just be gentle with my brother's checkbook in the coming years, unless, of course, you're buying me a present or taking me on vacation. <laughs> so on that note, before I get into any more trouble, uh, my toast is this. May your imperfections make you perfect for one another. Yeah. So, 
I'm Joanna, and I'm not nearly as witty as my sister, but I hope what I lack in wittiness, perhaps I can make up in sweetness. Um, <laughs> so earlier today, before the wedding, somebody said to me, Joanna, are you envious? And I thought, no, I don't want to marry my brother. I'm not envious. <laughs> But in, in all actuality, I have always thought that whatever girl got to marry my brother would be a very lucky girl indeed. Um, he's smart and funny and loyal and warm, and um, I think the world of you, Jim, and I think you have definitely met your match in Ashley, and I love you both dearly. So. You're here. Wow. All right, now we're going to have uh, the best man, Walter Boyd, come up here and say just a few words. Thank you, Frank. Well, as a fellow computer scientist with Jim for the last four years at UTD, I sort of pondered a little bit what the best way to come up here and give a toast was. And we had this nice projector set up, and I thought I could type up a nice little Word document or make a PowerPoint presentation like Jim's done for the last four years and have some glitz and glamour and show all these pictures of him and just stay seated instead of the limelight. Because, I mean, we hate sunlight and we hate all sorts of stuff as computer scientists. But, um, but Jim's not just a computer scientist. He's, he's an all-around sort of renaissance man of, of the 21st century. I mean, he's smart, he's athletic, and now he's got a beautiful wife to help him lead him through this life. And um, I'm just so, so awed by the fact that so many people here um, are with Jim and Ashley and have made me feel like almost a part of the family. I mean, there hasn't been any dissension among the ranks here at all. Everyone's welcoming and kind, so you can all give yourselves a pat on the back for being welcoming and humble and just accepting. And um, I think that will do really well for all of you in the future. And it's great that Jim and Ashley have such a nice support group around them to really help them figure out this, this wonderful life. So um, on that note, I wanted to tell just a little story um, that I wrote. So I do have to read this, I'm afraid, sorry, because it's a little ballad I wrote called The Ballad of Jim. So. Jim McAndrew is a really swell guy, and Ashley's a remarkable woman. For four short years they have been nearby, and now their love is set to be blooming. I met Jim through a friend of another friend during that fateful first game of Seedla. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Jim. And you know who won that, but we don't have to say that here. And now that we're done, college at its end. Our dashing groom is an Irish fiddler. And on this great day, now that the knot's tied, we gather in joyous celebration to remember the fun and the work on the side during our long quest towards graduation. So here I am to tell you bits about Jim, or bites, if you're like Jim, a CS major. I'll give you the inside scoop about him, if that's what you want me to wager. Jim is the best Java coder around, because in our cryptography class last year, instead of doing homework, he found that coding all the encryptions was a lot easier. RSA, Dippie Hellman, Rindale, Julius Caesar, Affine Blowfish, Jim would simply code them all and then sit back and do whatever he'd wish. And then there was Heim, our old AI prof, who issued, us a coding issued a coding challenge for us. Make artificial intelligence stuff to play a board game of Nine Men's Morris. And Jim's program kicked the pants off of mine, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> that same code went on as Jim interviewed um, while well, look, well, looking at national instruments. The folks there in Austin like Jim lots too, inspired by his skills, good looks, common sense. And Jim and I, we are not by ourselves, nor our friends, relatives, and your parents, in thinking that Ashley is truly a belle, full of charm, wit, and beauty that merits. A volleyball player and a wedding planner, a social scientist of high repute, no one could believe Ashley's calm demeanor as she walked down the aisle, Jim in his suit. Organizing each detail from square one, our beautiful brides on top of each part. And except for this toast, every single thing I've done came straight from her cheat sheet and from her heart. <laughs> and to my friend Jim, I say to you, you are so truly blessed beyond measure. Ashley's a rare gem, a jewel through and through, and I'm certain that she you will treasure. Instead of leaving glory days behind and bidding adieu to a super friend, we'll cherish the bygone times in our mind and tackle the future, no fear of the end. Jim and Ashley, I just want to say thanks for being my friends these last four years. You've really inspired me. You've been role models for me. 
and um, I hope we can continue to do this for the rest of our lives. So to Jim and Ashley and to a wonderful future. Jim and Ashley, jeez. Yeah, it's my turn to give a toast. I don't know if I can pull that one though. Sorry, Walter. First of all, I just want to say, Ashley, you know me, I'm a very wordy person. I, she always criticizes me for writing very long passages and long, over exceedingly long papers in class. But I'm going to keep this short and I'm going to keep it very simple. I have to say that I could not ask for two better friends than Ashley and Jim. Because with these two people, I've looked at my life and I've been able to see what I can improve on. To have role models that are close to you can change your life. Because they're there to encourage you, they're there to help you, they're there to listen when you have to rant. They're always there. I've traveled to London with these people, I've worked on films with these people, and they've never once complained. With anything that I've done, they've always been there to help, and they've always been there to support and encourage everything that I've ever undertaken. I want to say, Ashley, you are one of the most beautiful, talented, and pure people, and the person, excuse me, that I've ever known, ever. And I know that your thought was like a daughter with my family, and I hope that you still think of yourself as a sister in my family. And I want to say that for all the times we had growing up in high school, you were always there. You were always there to completely be there at my side when I was at my weakest. And for that, I want to say thank you. And for Jim, the guy who I met in science class, who sat behind me chewing lunch down in fourth period after lunch was over. <laughs> yeah, you offered me lunch, and I appreciated that, even though it was after lunch. But for you, I just want to say, because I met you in science, I want to connect it to science and say that Albert Einstein, when talking about relativity, said that when you get burned on a hot stove for one second, it feels like an hour. But when you talk to a pretty girl on a bench for, for an hour, it would only feel like a minute. The exact opposite. And time is so short. And so I want you to think about the years, the wonderful, blessed years you're going to have with Ashton. It's true to write, and I know you will, because you're a great guy. You're one of the best guys that I know. And I want to say thank you for your friendship and for the future here on, for your children, for your grandchildren, and for everything that you've helped me do. I just want to say thank you and that I love you both. And there's nothing more I can say. If anybody else would like to make a toast, I'm going to open up the floor now. They want to come up to the mic. Kirk. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Kirk Dunaway. And Ashley and I have been really close friends for 16 years, I believe. And um, I've seen Ashley go through a lot of things in her life. But I cannot be more happy and more proud of her than I am right now. And the only thing I ask of you, Jim, is to take really good care of my sister. And I know you will, and I wish both of you all the best. Thank you to Jim and Ashley. Before, uh, if there's anybody else who would like to give a toast, we have one more. Uh, Sarah Spew, one of the bridesmaids, is going to say something. And then we'll open up the floor once again if anybody else has something to say. Hi, I'm Sarah. And um, I've actually known Jim since elementary school. My first memory of him was um, him uh, jumping on a trampoline and sending his dog into the bushes. Um, and I've known Ashley since high school. And... Uh, Actually, what I wanted to say was um, I didn't, Ashley taught me a very important lesson I didn't realize until a couple of months ago. Um, I met Ashley in high school when um, all of my relationships lasted about two months. And uh, Ashley and I were sitting out in the hallway one day and um, 
I don't know if a lot of people know this, but after Ashley and Jim started dating, there was a short period um, where they broke up and then they got back together. And uh, this is during the time, that brief interim, where they were apart. And uh, Ashley was just so distraught and so in love with Jim. And um, we we're sitting in the hallway together talking. And I just remember talking about what is she going to do? And she was just so um, just passionate about how she felt about Jim. And I remember thinking, OK, well, you know, move on. And she just told me, Sarah, this is the one. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is who I am supposed to be with. And at the time, I thought, OK, how does she know this? But um, I just want to say I'm so happy for y'all that you were right. And you're sitting here now at your wedding. And um, I just wish the best for you guys, because I um, admire both of you so much and all of your accomplishments and your dedication, your love and devotion to each other. So, to Ashley and Jim. Alright, anybody else would like to make a toast when the mic is open and available? Is that a yes? Of course. Hello, my name is John McCowan. I'm uh, Ashley's cousin. I somehow was dubbed the uh, wedding crasher today, tonight, so <laughs> of course I have to give up here and uh, give a little talk. Uh, I've watched Ashley grow up over the years, and I've not been able to have the fortunate uh, of knowing Jim. But uh, Ashley has been uh, someone that's uh, just been a wonderful person uh, growing up. And if she can uh, be as great as she was to me, to you, you'll got to live a wonderful life. And Ashley, I have to say, it's no fun anymore. I can't pick on you anymore. So I have to move on to Catherine now. <laughs> so here, here. All right. If there aren't any more toasts, I don't see anybody else coming up to the front. Last chance. Last chance. We're gonna go ahead and let uh, Jim give a toast here. He'd like to do that this evening, folks. Everybody else I had to print mine out. I'm not a public speaker, so she's the politician. Okay. Of course, I have to start with my beautiful bride, Ashley. Thank you so much for distracting me in AP history. Junior year. And it was well worth being the two on the test. And not getting any college credit for that class. And meeting you. Thank you for having the nerve to ask me out on our first date. Thank you for coming to UTD with me. I don't know if you'd be here if you hadn't. That really meant a lot to me. Thank you for waiting five years for me to ask you to marry you. <laughs> it took a while. Thank you for saying yes to my pathetic proposal <laughs> with my mom on the phone. That was, that was special. Uh, and thank you for being here with me right now. I love you. So I'm going to move on to my dad now. I guess the first thing that came to my mind whenever I was talking or thinking about writing a speech about my dad was, thank you so much for answering all of my retarded questions <laughs> for my entire life. Um, I wouldn't be as smart if you hadn't done that without you. Um, you've always been my number one mo role model. And thank you for teaching me to have integrity and discipline by example. You're the best father of son could ask for. Come back up here. I need moral support. That's 
so wives are for, right? <laughs> now that I got one, I'm going to use it. <laughs> so much for always loving me no matter what and thank you for giving me a solid moral foundation to base my life on and thank you for trusting me over India for tech support that means a lot to me <laughs> and of course for being the best mother a son could ask for I really mean it to Mike. First of all, thank you for allowing me to marry your daughter. I can't even begin to explain to you how much that means to me. And thank you for always respecting me and trusting me and letting me know that I've earned your respect because that means the most to me. It really does. And thank you, of course, for giving us this wonderful wedding. It's been awesome and this reception is great, and we really appreciate it. Um, go ahead and thank you. <laughs> Trina, the first thing that came to my mind, actually, when I was going to write this, was thank you for always having a Corona with me when we go to Miho's and come back to <laughs> What can I say? It's no fun to drink alone. So. <laughs> Sometimes Ashley will come in, but she'll usually drink China. She's a Texas girl. So, um, thank you for helping me conspire to meet with Mike to ask him to marry Ashley. And not telling Ashley about that, even though she probably knew. Women know everything. And thank you for always being so kind to me and sweet to me. Every single time I come home to Arlington, it's like a second home. It really is. Give it up for Trina. <laughs> Jennifer, thank you. The earliest memory I had of you when I was thinking about writing this was you pulling me for endless hours of wakeboarding on Lake Arlington way back in the day. You were always there to be my boat driver. And again, thank you for introducing me to Irish music and Ireland and everything Irish and bringing us back to our roots. I can't wait to go to Ireland with you. If you're still in for it, I'm still in for it. And I'm looking forward to having a Guinness. And thank you so much for helping me with my career planning. I don't think it would have been possible without you. I don't think we'd be in Austin. And that means a lot to me, it really does. Um, you're amazing at what you do. So give it up for me. recent thing I'm thinking about is thank you for taking me on that snowboarding trip to Vancouver. That was awesome. Um, what? Thank you. Um, and over the years, for some reason, it seems like you're always the one that I came to whenever it was talking about relationship advice or whatever else. And I know we talked for hours about this relationship right here. And just the finer things in life like that, spirituality and everything, and I really appreciate that. So. Sarah, I cannot thank you enough. You were our matchmaker. You're the reason we're here. So that's all I have to say. Give it up for Sarah. <laughs> Eventually, I probably would have asked you out if you had just waited. So, just for the record, just for the record. Walter, thank you so much for that toast. And thank you so much for sticking there all the way with me through school. I probably wouldn't, wouldn't have been as good of a student if it wasn't for you and definitely for Ashley. I'm not quite sure what Paul was talking about when he said I was always going to class and studying, but maybe that's what it seemed like, I don't know. <laughs> there was a fair being of it. Um, and it wouldn't be a toast without saying thank you for all the many, many, many games of Zebla. And uh, I think I won the first game, actually. It was a bit of beginner's luck. So anyways, thank you for being here. 
So thank you for the fried zucchini, and thank you for taking care of all the grunt work that needed to go along with this. Thank you for Matthew and Garrett and everybody else that did it too. So give it up for Walter. Paul, all I can say is I can't believe you survived being my roommate for two years. <laughs> and I think the greatest thing about it is, is our friendship survived. So many times you are roommates with somebody and when you move out, it's like you want to kill the guy. And don't get me wrong, there was times I probably wanted to kill you. And you probably wanted to kill me. Uh, I don't think we cleaned our kitchen once uh, the entire time. You did not clean your bath. I definitely didn't see my bathroom, and I, Paul didn't do it for me. Uh, and thanks for making all those late night runs to Shreveport with me and winning $2,000 at the craps table. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Give it up for Paul. Yeah. Frank, <laughs> thank you for emceeing, first of all. But thank you so much for getting me into the world of movies. I have so much respect for everybody that does that, and especially for you. You're the best movie maker I know, and I've learned everything from you, man. Thanks for helping me out in the next window. I couldn't have done it without you. You're an inspiration, you really are. And it's all part of the adventure, man. It's, it's London. <laughs> Anyways, give it up for Frank. does it for the head table, so uh, I just want to thank everybody for coming out, honestly. Um, I know some of you guys came all the way from California and New York, and we really appreciate it, and I'm looking forward to meeting the rest of you, and I'm glad to meet all the other people that I met today. I'm sorry if I don't remember everybody's names. Um, I'm really trying. Um, once again, thank you. Thank you for the wedding. It's awesome. And thank you, my bride. <laughs> Uh, now what we're going to do right now is, we've had some very lovely toasts. If I could have all the married couples that are in this room to try to do their best and squeeze into this little spot right here, we're going to have some music. Let's have a little dance, shall we? <laughs> Air Corps. 
the start of World War II. We want to thank you so much. We're in the service of All right, Ashley. Ashley, we're gonna give you this uh, option. We can do the bouquet toss, garter toss, right now. We can make a little bit more. It's up to you. All right, guys, we're gonna do the bouquet toss. Guys, I mean girls. Girls first. Then we'll do the garter. You want to do the bouquet last? We can do the bouquet last. You know what? Let's save the bouquet for last. Jim, where's your garter? single men to the floor. They lost me as well. That's a big room we have here. There we go. Alright. Jim, you want to do a countdown? Drum roll, please. <laughs> Drum roll, please. Here he comes, here comes the catch. Here's James McAdoo going down over at the leg. He's going down for the right leg here. He's about to pick up the R. He's about to come up straight and swing it far back. Yeah. <laughs> 